Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Well, the New Year's event is still currently going on, so that means it's only a matter of time before they announce Saber Wars 2. We haven't gotten an announcement of it yet, but I assume it'll be happening pretty soon. Uh, chances are by the time I finish this recording, it'll hopefully have a solid release date. But either way, I wanted to go over the event itself and talk about uh, the... <laughs> Space Ishtar and stuff like that. So that's the going to be today's video. I hope you enjoy it, and let's get into it. So Saber Wars 2 rerun. Uh, what is Saber Wars? Uh, it's oh man, don't make me explain it. Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff going on. There's a Space Ishtar. She's space, and it's all good here. Um, you get a bunch of cool stuff related to it. The summoning campaign is going to be this. It's going to be Space Ishtar, which is basically like three different Rin Ishtar units in one. Uh, four, I guess, technically, if you count the, the extra costume with something different. And then she also comes with Calamity Jane. We have these event craft essences, which is Princess of the Red Bean Paste, the Planet Rock, and to Pursuit the Literary and Military Arts simultaneously. Uh, none of them really come into mind as like, oh, crazy, but they do have nice art on them and stuff like that, and they help you with the grind. So there you go. Uh, there's also going to be a summoning campaign too, which is going to feature Yagu and uh, Mysterious Heroine X here, which you can pick up if you are not interested in Space Star or any of the many, many five stars currently going around in summoning campaigns. You can definitely do that. So basically the summary is that you have to collect... Um, what is this called? Altorium? Yeah, Altorium. You grind it a whole bunch and then you move on to the next planet. There's wanted posters where you collect bounties, you collect goddess scriptures and stuff like that. And it's a pretty easy enough event to understand. Uh, the rerun compensation uh, for those who have who have gotten the following items. If you already got the Holy Grail, you will get the uh, crystallized lore. If you already have this outfit, you'll get 100 mana prisms. If you already have this um, command code, you'll get one rare mana prism. This one you'll get 200 and then 100, and then you'll also be able to go into the exchange shop to get the Mysterious Heroine Z unlock permit, uh, which is a special outfit for Mysterious Heroine X, which unlocks her Z version. There's also going to be a strengthening quest for Zyagyu, which is nice. Always nice to get those kind of things in there and next we have the event shop as you can see here it's a lot of clearing missions <laughs> gold saber badges the shop itself uh let me see is there any specific material i saw a little bit weird now with the material shop i don't really go looking for material anymore but it has the basics of everything you need oh yeah they also have this um twin star diva which is the free ce which is a hundred damage up or 200 if it's max on limit broken. It increases NP generation rate and NP damage and gain three crit stars. So, main quest. Yeah, that's basically it. It's a pretty, it's a mission as well. So you're gonna have to clear a lot of these missions. It seems like a pain in the butt, but it's not that bad from what I remember. So don't worry too much. There's plenty of guides, much better guides than I can give you out there for this specific stuff. But just to know going in, if you plan to beat the event in like a single two to three days is that possible it probably is possible but you'll really hurt yourself so i would suggest do going at it as much as you can in per day when you're doing it um trying to do it all and in, in the span of like even three days is kind of insane <laughs> so i wouldn't suggest it we also get this free seed which is features space streak which i always liked this is really nice and this is increased the party damage if you have Space Ishtar, this is probably one of the most easiest events to grind because she just deals so much damage and stuff like that. She's so good at looping. Uh, okay. Now let's go over the actual units that are in the Summon Banner. That's kind of a very brief overview of the actual um, event itself. It's not too bad from what I can remember. You just need to remember to kind of get on it really early and kind of stick with it. All right, so we'll start with Calamity Jane, because almost everyone is going to be going for Space Ishtar. I figure, why not talk about Calamity Jane? I like Calamity Jane. She has some nice outfits. Very basic cheerleader. Look at that. Adorable. Beautiful. Love to see it. Next, we have... What in the world? Oh, I think those are from TCG Player. Okay. Her first skill, which is the Sabotage. Uh, B. Reduces all enemies' attack by 10% for 3 turns, reduces their critical attack chance for 3 turns, crit chance is 19% at level 10, and is 9% at level 1. Um, her second skill, was there a second? No, there isn't. Uh, why is it built like this? 
It's really weird. Okay, never mind. Galaxy Messenger EX reduces all enemies' MP gauge by 1, increases on attack for 3 turns, 80% chance to increase party's attack except self for 3 turns, and charges party's MP gauge by 10%. The attack up is 20%, the attack except self up is 20%, and cooldown 6. Third skill. O Polar Star Shine My Way B increases one ally's buff success rate by 3 turns. When there are 10 crit stars or more, increase crit damage by 3 turns. If there's 20 crit stars or more, increase their crit star absorption rate for 3 turns. When there are 30 crit stars or more, grant them evasion for 1 turn. When there are 40 crit stars or more, grant them and ignore invincibility for 3 turns. When there are 50 crit stars or more, charge their MP gauge. And it's a 40% buff success rate. Crit damage up is 40%. The absorption is 1,500% up, and the MP gained is 20%, and that is a cooldown of 5 on this skill specifically. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Writing A, Present Concealment A, and Independent Action A+. And her pen skill for the third one is a increase against foreigners. This sounds so weird every time I say it. Noble Phantasm is the dead man's hand, the first black hand that beckons death, which is funny because this is not technically what... She shouldn't have this, but either way. Um, Calamity Jane is not really known about for this. I think her husband died by the dead man's hand. If you did not know, the dead man's hand is something that is in poker. It was the thing that killed... Oh, man, I wish... It... Was it Billy the Kid? No, it wasn't Billy the Kid. It had to be someone related to it. Let me look if I can see it here. It might be here, because now it's going to be... Uh, but yeah, Wild Bill Hick Hick Hickok died, according to it. Wild Bill, uh, there you go. I don't remember if they were actually legitimately married. There was a whole backstory. I remember looking this up when she first released. But anyway, it's a rank D noble phantasm. Hits five times. It's quick. Ignores evasion for one turn. Deals damage to one enemy. 1,200 at level 1 and all the way at level 5 it is 2,000. Reduce their defense for 2 turns. Reduce their quick resistance for 2 turns. Activates first. Activates first. 10%, 10% at charge level 1 and at charge level 500%. It is 30%, 30%. Alright, so it's an increase of 5% each rank as you go up. And her actual kit here is 2 quicks, 2 arts, 1 buster. And that's Calamity Jane. Um... She's definitely a support servant. I remember she, her being... She's a very weird support servant because she's 100% based off of this this skill here, which if you can get this all off, this just 100% complements the other skills that she has, like this one, for example, that uh, only has an 80% chance to increase party's attack, but if this activates and you had at least... Um, you have to activate this first because it's an increase of one ally's buff success rate for three turns, so you activate it on her. That should give her enough chance to give everyone the 20% from there. And then from there, you kind of go... Oh, well, this is also weird because it just gives it all to her. So it's a very weird support unit. She can support, but also she can just give it to herself. Um, can kind of go... I forget how buff success rate, either that... Yeah, I have no idea how buff success rate works, actually, now that I think about it. Because usually the ones who do it are Ozymandias, and I think he gives it to, like, everyone. But now I've never actually thought about it. How does buff success rate actually work? Let me look at Ozymandias right now. Because <laughs> he has a skill that's very similar. Um, increase the party's buff success rate for one turn. So that's an increase of 40%. But now here's the question. I've never actually had to think about it. Is he increasing his chance? Okay, so yes, if he's using this on himself, that means that this has now a 100% chance of going. So if you use it on Jane, does that mean she now has a 100% chance of giving it to everyone? Or is it the party member themselves has the 100% chance of getting the buff? I don't know. Feel free to tell me if you know, because I've never actually thought about it until this exact moment. Um, she's a she's super heavy gimmicky unit, though. <laughs> it's 100% based off of this gimmick. There's nothing really that I can think of that she would super crazy excel at, but she's very cute, and she seems like she'd be a fun unit to use for a single target. For something where if you want to maybe give yourself a challenge or do something else like that, um, try and win in a very different way than you, what you would expect, then I think that she's definitely the kind of unit for you to kind of go for. But she's also the four star, so hopefully you can get her. And she's also, n she is limited, so there you go. Ah, huh, yeah, interesting. I have her and I use her occasionally, but I don't think I've ever really gotten her third skill to go off too crazy. 
It's actually harder than you think, but it is an interesting crit star. It's it's interesting to go for it. I'll say that much. I'll give her that much. And next, the person who is actually the main feature, it's of course Space Star. I should mention the other two. Mysterious Heroine X um, is a single target assassin. She's gonna do you perfectly fine in that regard. If you have her, then congratulations. Uh, she used to be one of the worst units in the game, but they've given her a lot of buffs, so it kind of offsets it. So you're gonna have you're gonna have to actually buff. As you can see here, she's been buffed in every single skill, and I want to say even her noble phantasm. So she's perfectly good. Um, she's anti saber. There you go. Have fun. She's a quick unit assassin. The only thing that is negative about single target assassins is that comma is better. But maybe sometimes you just don't want to ever run comma or you don't have comma. So, or maybe you care about Saber just more than you care about um, Sakura. So there you go. Space Ishtar. Let's get into her. And Yagyu is a very good single target arts swordsman. Uh, he gets the job done. Not a lot of people go for him or care for him because he's a man. But I still think he does perfectly fine at what he does. And he's also story locked. So, definitely very few people actively go for him, but if you're going for him, then hey, I think it's a pretty good investment in time and stuff. Anyway, Ishtar, Space Ishtar, not to be confused with Ishtar and Ershkagal, two complete, three completely different units all con together. And we have her, one quick, two arts, two buster. And then our first skill is the Devil Sugar A. Increases own attack for three turns. Increases party attack uh, except self for three turns. Grants party charm debuff immunity except for the self for three turns. And it's 20% for her and 30% for everyone else. Her second skill is the Venus Driver B. Increases own MP damage for one time three turns. Grants self invincibility for one attack three turns. Selects own MP command cards type between quick, arts, or buster for three turns. That's right, she works with basically any of them. <laughs> Crazy. And then the MP damage up is 20%, that lasts for one time three turns. So there you go. And invincibility for one attack three turns. Multiple startling EX charges on MP gauge, 80% chance to increase quick arts or buster by 20% for three turns, and shoots a 50% MP gain. Uh, crazy stuff. Passive skill, magic resistance C, independent action C, god assassins A++, avenger EX, oblivion correction A, and self replenishment self -replen Replenishment Magic B charges on MP gauge by 3.5% every turn. Uh, yeah, her pen skill for the third one is Anti Archer. Take that, Archers. And her Noble Phantasm is either Arts, Quick, or Buster. And there are slight changes in each one. For Arts, it is deals damage to all enemies, increase on damage uh, with extra card attacks by 100% for one single turn, and then increase on MP damage for, for three turns, and this is the overcharge effect, and it is applied for 20% of charge level 1, and then all the way at the final charge level, it is 60% if you can get it there, so it's an increase of 10% for each charge. Um, her MP damage when it's arts is 450%, 600%, 675%, 712.5%, 750%, 750%, all the way at MP5. And then when it's quick, the base damage is 600%. The reason is, is that quick naturally has a base damage that is lower. So each one of these is changed to make it so that they basically do the same amount of damage no matter what so even though quick's base damage is 0.8 percent it compensates by getting 600 percent damage and buster is slightly stronger so that's why it starts off weaker at 300 percent and stuff like that so yeah that's space ishtar um one of the best aoe servants that you could ask for for literally any what what did it pick your poison here i think the worst that she does in is quick uh, obviously, in the upcoming Buster meta, you can easily use her because a lot of her skills are 5 cooldown, which is very easy to abuse. 5 and 6, um, very easy to abuse. In the upcoming Buster specific meta that requires, um, I think, Vich and Oberon, or sometimes just Vich is enough. Um, for arts, she's obviously one of the best loopers in NA at the moment. Just literally bring her to whatever thing you want and she'll do perfectly fine because she's just built that good. Um, quick is her weakest one, and that's because she doesn't have any built-in NP gain. The 50% NP gauge does help a whole bunch. Um, so you can technically still do it with the right 
command codes and the right um, mystic mystic codes is that what they're called the outfits the right outfits the right ce's you need basically the right amount of everything and you can loop with her in quick so she can do basically any <laughs> any of them that you want um but for me arts is usually the best one um i don't use her a whole bunch i do have her uh but literally if there's ever a situation where like i don't really have a yet but the reason i don't use her a whole bunch of arts is because i already have a lot of arts units that can kind of get the job done but if there's ever a case where i don't i can usually just get spacious tar and it's easy easy <laughs> it's an easy clap to just e take down most nodes it the same applies for single target stuff she still is also very good in that she also does have some nice little things here, like giving the, the party charm debuff immunity. Which, god, I wish I had this when I fought Shuden and Raiko back in Shimosa way back in the day. That would have been nice. Um, the only negatives about it is that this is just an 80% chance of buffing, but really it's not that big a deal um, in the grand scheme of things. It's really not. Um, maybe in the future this will be buffed so that's 100% all the time, but really that doesn't seem enough to warrant a buff at the moment because of how good she already is um this is as close to the ultimate unit as you want i've seen a lot of people saying they were good with skipping muramasa because they already had spacious tar and they already are pretty good <laughs> on their arts needs uh, the only real units that kind of stand up to her in terms of how good she is at specifically dealing de dealing damage with arts aoe's and also being so good with mp gain is the upcoming summer comma uh, both of them are actually very similar. They are neck and neck in terms of how good they are. And you can debate which one is better than the other, but they're both, at the end of the day, good. And they can do what they function, so there's, I don't see really a real point to argue about it. And then eventually they release Summer Ibuki, who is better than both of them somehow, <laughs> in the most amazing way possible. But as you can see there, that's almost an entire years away. And Space Star has been out since, like... I don't know, way too... Yeah, ever since the original releasing of Space, uh, Sa uh, Saber Wars 2, which is maybe a year and a half ago. It's still an extremely solid unit, still extremely good, still worth having, still worth owning. If you're a big Rin fan, then this is an obvious easy get. She's literally three in one. Which flavor do you want? Do you want the super serious Sif version? Do you want the happy-go-lucky cowboy version? Do you want the Eldric being from space who's good? Maybe you want it in blue, you can get that one. Her April Fool's is like literally three of them on a giant Rin spaceship. That's right, I forgot to mention she summons a giant fucking spaceship from her <laughs> noble phantasm. There's so many reasons for this unit to be worth owning. Just pick your poison and pick one. Uh, you can use it for gameplay, you could use it for your own personal love of Rin. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> can have whatever fun you want with them they're just that good and that's when a unit's that good there's not really much you can say <laughs> any negative that i have that I would have for her are like nitpicks and it would be so stupid to, <laughs> to lay into them but there you go that's space ishtar most of the people i've known it's really rough because like i said the um and someone else pointed out to me too i didn't realize it a lot of the early fate stay night dudes are getting reruns in the beginning of the year uh, everyone but Sakura got one. None of the Sakura pseudo-servants got one. Neither Parvati or Kama, but she's getting her dues in Summer. But obviously we had Muramasa, which is Emiya, and then we had Space Ishtar, which is Ish which, Ishtar, well, which is Rin, and then we have a Mysterious Heroine X, who is clearly Saber. And then we have Ilya, who's Ilya, so we have her there too. For Summer, for, Val for Valentine's Day, we have Karen, who is, um... I was going to call him Rasputin, but that's his name. Kire's uh, daughter. So we have a bunch of early stuff going on from there. It's pretty crazy. And as such, I like I've mentioned before in previous videos, this is a very rough year in terms of summoning. So kind of pick your poison about what you want to get. Thankfully for me, I already have Space Star, so I don't have to worry about it. And I had to summon for her when there was potentially no pity. And for a lot of people, there isn't pity. But for a lot of whales, they'll be able to potentially get her. Not that I'm saying that they want to spend that much. I'm just saying they at least have a chance of getting it. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, if you are summoning for her, I wish you the best of luck. She's definitely worth having. Um, this event itself is pretty uh, pretty nice as well. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, you have to also clear Solomon. So get, get working. Make sure to beat Solomon. You should be able to beat it in time. <laughs> it's really not that hard. Uh, the hardest part about it is actually reading all the story because there's a lot of it. 
But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. I wish you guys the best of luck. I hope your Muramasa polls went well, and Happy New Year. Because this is technically the first video that's out in the new year. Even though there was a Marvel Snap video, but that video uh, was recorded before the new year. Because it was just a stream highlights. So there you go. Goodbye, everyone. Till next time. Peace out.